You're listening to Premier Drive here on Premier Christian Radio. Welcome to the Premier Drive FAQ sessions. It is part two of our new series on marriage. This uh, month, a bit later on, is Marriage Week. And here to guide us through is our guest and guide, uh, Michaela Hyde from the Marriage Foundation. Thank you for being here once again. Pleasure. Really good to be here. So um, we've been talking about the theme for Marriage Week this year being a recipe for a healthy marriage. And uh, sometimes I think it's good for us to even have a good starting point that we know where to go from and we're focusing this week on the early days and myths around marriage and beyond the big day um you know the things that you weren't necessarily told before Mm. the surprises uh weddings are are big and expensive and they can be a big focus you know sometimes you get these two three year engagements and it's and then suddenly the day's just gone yeah um is there a danger of focusing on getting married rather than being married um Absolutely, 100%. And I think if we just take this as a theme for Christians, non-Christians, for, you know, there is this idea now that it's all about the wedding day. It's building up and lots of money needs to be spent. First of all, you know, we do not need to spend much money on a wedding day at all because it's not, it isn't just about that day. It's about the adventure afterwards. And one of the things I often liken this to is I'm I'm a mum, I've got two children. And you know, when you're expecting a first child, there's so much to talk about the labour and about, you know, things you need to do. And, and I, you know, I wrote a birthing plan. I always used to say I had this birthing plan. I took it in with me and it might as well have been a list of my favourite films. No one took any notice of it anyway. Um, but there's all this emphasis on, on the day. And, you know, as, as a first time mum, you feel a bit nervous about labour. Is it going to be really painful? All those sorts of things. It's all about that day. And any parent will tell you the reality is frankly that was the easy bit it's the bit <laughs> afterwards that brought the challenges um and um and beautiful challenges wonderful it's a brilliant thing and i think it's the same with marriage there can be so much of an emphasis on what the day looks like is the dress going to be okay are the flowers going to arrive in time and who's doing what and who's organizing this and and so much thought around that but actually that is just the beginning of the adventure and don't misunderstand this I loved my wedding day and had a lovely time and I think it's a very very special day it's a milestone but it's a milestone it is the beginning of something and the adventure really is what's to come afterwards and so I think often this emphasis means that we don't think enough about what would it be like to be married at the very beginning um now um we my husband and i we had marriage marriage prep um which i would absolutely recommend um if you're engaged um and you're sort of wondering about you know what what things to add to your list put on their marriage prep it's such an important thing to do it can really set you up well to start married life but it is a starting point and I think even once you're married um, it's sort of just being aware of, of adapting and adjusting to each other now um, obviously we've got a predominantly Christian audience listening in and so for me um, I waited until I was married before I lived with my husband um, and so you know when you're going out together and you're engaged and I was slightly giddy and pathetic I remember when I first started going out and my friend just said I was just grinning I was just grinning all the time and I couldn't help it and that sounds so cheesy but you know there it was I was I was grinning um, and then when you get married and um, I moved into my husband's house so he had a house and uh discussions around the decor for example his answer was it'll do the job my answer was no it really won't it's worn out we need to change this and so there was this kind of clash of thinking even around the decor of course it's always silly things isn't it so learning to adapt to one another and hearing each other and thinking okay what's important to them needs to become important to me and vice versa but I'd say just be patient with yourself as well in those early days be patient with yourself and be patient with them because it is one thing being all Gideon in love and it's another thing living with somebody who actually will approach things from a different way to you. What would you say are some of the biggest surprises or perhaps a better word might be misconception or myths about married life? Um, Okay yeah that's such a a good question because I think again it it ends up feeling a bit like a fairy tale and we don't think about the realities. Um, I think one of the big things is people would say love is always enough. Mm. Now I would say no it's not (laughs) I think you need to have love you know love is love is essential in that relationship but if I just loved my husband but didn't act on it didn't respond to each other and in a a way that was going to help us grow then 
the relationship would struggle. Um, I think that love is an action. It needs to be a mindset. It needs to be a choice. I talked um, last week about commitment being a daily choice. That's what love is. So love on its own, on its own, feeling gooey and slushy and you know, sort of Hollywood like or you know, whatever it might be isn't enough on its own it's got to be an active thing it's got to be something you invest in on a regular basis Um, don't just rely on feelings we know as well feelings that classic thing we can't rely on our emotions we're not always going to feel 100% in love with our with our other half if they've done something annoying or irritating the the feelings of love (laughs) are a little bit further back and it's more this is frustrating and the same goes the other way but actually the love is still there Mm -hmm. it's still a constant but it's about how we behave with one another so definitely Definitely. Um, don't just think, oh, well, I love you, so that should be enough. You've got to do something in your relationship. You've got to look after it and maintain it. Um, I think as well, um, another myth would be they all lived happily ever after. Okay. There's a reason why fairy tales stop there, because <laughs> it would stop being a fairy tale if you carried on. Because actually life throws all sorts of things at us and there is this misconception I think more broadly that we have to be happy all the time. I think probably social media you know plays into that as well we've all got to be smiling and you know drinking prosecco and life's <laughs> life's a ball and everything's great and our children are perfect and da, da, da. and that's just not how it is so life has its ups and downs so seeking a sense of perpetual hap- happiness is unrealistic if if something really tragic happens in your family you're not going to feel happy but it doesn't mean so there's not contentment with the relationship so i would say contentment in your relationship being you know, in that place where you think, I know that this is right for me, but times are difficult. So don't imagine it's the happily ever after. There will be tough times. There's a reason the wedding vows say, you know, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Sometimes we, on the wedding day, it's all about the better and feeling great. But we know that tough times come. So mm-hmm. the happily ever after, it's, it is a fairy tale. <laughs> um, okay. Um, when we're married, I'll be able to change his or her annoying habits. Ah, okay. that's a big one, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, um, my, my mother-in-law said to me, actually, you don't marry someone to change to change them. And I said, no, but you give it your best shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've laughed about it since then. And um, and actually, it's it's absolutely true. You, Of course, you don't marry someone to change them. You, that's not what you marry them for. You marry you marry them because you love them. But inevitably, I think we do need to recognise that we need to change. And if we both have that view and that opinion, then we can grow together so there is that fine line of you accept your partner as they are it's okay to challenge things that they do and say that makes me unhappy um you know that's frustrating and to be able to hear that back again but if we if we go in thinking i'm just going to change this i'm going to change that that's not going to work and it's going to cause arguments and and difficulties um and interestingly as two people when you think about changing yourself so that you can live together in a happy and contented way. Um, There will be times when you feel that you're making more of a compromise and vice versa. Um, But I think sometimes when there's things in our own life that we we find annoying, it feels like a bigger deal for us and we feel like they're not trying as hard. So, for example, tidiness is always an issue, isn't it? There's somebody who will always be tidier than the other. In my house, it's my husband is the untidy one and I'm the tidy one. Now, over the years, he has chosen to be tidier so he is definitely tidier um and at the same time i've chosen to be more patient when i think he's being untidy (laughs) and that's just a silly fun example but do you know what i'm saying there's that sense of you know it's about a mindset of thinking Mm. if if you want change to happen in a relationship you need to start with yourself and of course those things that start off as uh, as silly fun examples can actually turn into resentments if we feel like someone's consistently we can take it personally can't we they're 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 not doing that thing if they cared for me they yeah. would, that's it's a small thing to ask stack yeah. the dishwasher how I want it what's that yeah, exactly. <laughs> all of those things can actually yeah. start off as small harmless things but over yeah. the years can really grow can't they because of what they communicate I guess yes yeah so I think just yeah absolutely being patient and and at the same time obviously you know it will be frustrating at times and that's okay and don't beat yourself up about that either you know it's not that we have to go in and be perfect partners and get it all right you know there's no such thing as a perfect marriage there's very good marriages but we're all imperfect people and we in the same way that we receive grace as we walk with with Jesus then in a relationship we 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 need to give grace to one another for the things that we don't like or the things we struggle with and and then look at ourselves as well hold up a mirror and think okay 
perhaps I need to start here first anyway. Yeah. So, um, okay, so other misconceptions as well. Um, when children come along, they need to be the priority. Now, our children, you know, when I had my kids, when they were tiny, and when a baby cries, when it's hungry, <laughs> nothing else is going on in the world. There's just a crying baby and that that actually needs our immediate attention. We need to feed our child. We need to attend to them. So in one respect, the, a child's needs might kind of be at the forefront in a way that my husband's needs won't be in that moment. But I think if we think that we need to just entirely put our children first and let our own relationship with our, with our partners drift, then we're, we're, in, we're going to be in bother. Um, it's really important that we prioritise time with one another, that we make our partner um, a priority because we can be a better set of parents. We can be a better team for our children. We can be a better version of ourselves for our kids. And actually with, you know, I talked last week about, um, you know, the issues of family breakdown and what kids want most in the world is for their parents to to be together if that's possible that's what they they want so maintaining a strong relationship is so important for our kids well-being and for their for their stability so make your partner your priority and your kids will be getting the best anyway that's so good so i don't there's any other i have got some others but do you want any more or is that yeah We've give us give us one few. more then so um okay so um oh which one shall i go for oh, i know this is quite a good one actually um relationship courses and therapy are for marriages that are in danger yes now this is such a big misconception and i think that people have been married for you know two minutes and 20 years and 50 years can still think that's true um and if you maybe in your church someone has said oh come on a, on a marriage course and you say i oh, know we're fine thanks we're, we're good we're all we're all fine as if the invitation is because there might be a problem marriage courses are a brilliant resource my husband and i went on a time for marriage course um there in fact while i mention it there are resources on our website actually which with different courses you can do. We've got some free tasters as well. But going on a marriage course is a really good way of enriching what you have. So wherever your relationship is at, it will grow and flourish if you go on a, on a course. Um, or maybe do, um, there's things like Toucan as well, which is an online app that you can do to strengthen your marriage. There are other online resources. There are lots of things you can do. But these, these resources are here to make what's good even better. And if there are challenges, those things will be dealt with too and will come up. But that. don't don't wait you know go on a course in you know enrich your marriage um and grow together be- through that process i guess it is difficult to put down to one thing but just to finish this week michaela is, is there one piece of advice that you wish that every newly married couple were told from day one or, or something that you wish that they knew from day one um I think, obviously, don't believe the myths. <laughs> sure, that covers quite a few things then. Um, but I would say invest in your marriage. Take time out with each other. Make time for each other on a regular basis. Check in with each other. Um, don't ever think that because you're married, you know, you can, you know, the communication is important, that, that spending that time together, if you spend time together, then that's one of the crucial things that I think, certainly in my relationship, um, has made all the difference great that's great thank you so much and just give us that website again so it's www.marriage-week.org.uk brilliant well Michaela's going to be with us next week which will actually be uh, marriage week itself and we're going to be uh, covering a big one intimacy um, some a key ingredient for all um, marriages as well so make sure you join us next week and Michaela for now thank you again thank you